strive to survive milk that particular scene out so much that yeah. every episode of uh, the last season had mention of uh, the accident do you remember the 2013 Indian grand yeah yeah i think that was when uh, vettel bowed down to his car right yeah oh my god so think about his girlfriend you know yeah. his uh, child, child. You know, his, his red, uh, bull red bull seat yes exactly <laughs> This is Barack Obama and I'll be giving you an intro about our sponsors today. I mean we Digital Marketing is a 360 degree marketing agency based out of Hyderabad. Be traditional digital marketing services that your brand needs, a professional drone shoot for your real estate products, real estate lead generation, professional video shoot for your restaurants. They've got it all. More details about them in the description below. Let's hop back onto the video. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is the seventh episode of our. Is it not seventh? Oh, it's the eighth episode. Oh yeah, uh, this is the eighth episode of our the pod series. And for this episode, we have uh, my friend Ayush here. What's Hello. up, Ayush? Nothing much, man. It's Independence Day today, so. Oh yeah, it is. Yes, the entire theme of freedom is in the air, as you can see outside. <laughs> yeah, but how, anyway. How are, how are you feeling independent today? I'm feeling quite free. Yeah. I think, yeah, that would be the theme. So I mean, there's really not much. I think the only thing I'm happy about is that there's not much traffic outside. So maybe that's a good thing. Plus, again, Jai Hind. <laughs> that that had to be said. It had to be. It had to be okay, definitely. Uh, Let's go. So yeah, let's start with it. Um, as you can see, it's very pretty evident what we're going to talk about today. Of course, you're wearing it. Yes. Uh, how sad is it for you this season? I mean, I'm smiling right now because I'm not watching any races. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. yeah, but again, uh, being a fan, I still have to you know follow like what's going on. Is there some you know glimmer of hope? Which I mean, there there was a glimmer of hope a uh, mm. few races ago when he was on pole. Was he on pole? Uh, well, he was on the podium. Let me just let me just give it a quick yeah. check. Yeah. I think, I think two races ago. Should be on me. I think he was P two. He might have missed. Charles was P two, I guess. Yeah. I have seen. Oh yeah, he was P two, and by the time turn one happened, uh, yeah. Stappen overtook him. Just turn yeah, one, let's, dude. Let's just give it a check. It's yeah. not even a lap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it happened. Oh, you haven't seen the race, but you know. I have not because again. He was P two. It explains my happiness right now because <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not watching any of those, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. I he cannot. was P two. Yeah. And during the race start, uh, Verstappen just passed him just on the turn one. We're talking about Spa, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, I think it was Spa. Yes, yes, I yeah. just checked it. Yeah, well, at least I'm happy that he is reaching, you know, the front row in the races. I'm just happy. That's a nice end to the summer part of it. And now. You think it's a strategy, or you think it's the car? What's fucked up? I think it's. Uh, I think I wouldn't say it's more of a fuck up. See now. We all know that Ferrari has now a new dream principal, who was Alfa Romeo's Fred Vasseur, and a successful one as well. Yes, he is known to be a very uh, what do you say strategic operator and very cutthroat as well. Yes, cutthroat. But now we are yet to see some of the cutthroat, uh, you know, aspects of his operations as we are still seeing the same uh, strategy blunders that we have seen. I think maybe four races to five races earlier. And as I'm not following this season, what are your thoughts on this? Like I heard the story. Uh, it's an idea or not a story? Uh, when you compare Ferrari and Mercedes, uh, they both are very big organizations. Uh, although they're a racing team, they have so much history behind them, right? So um, mm -hmm. coming to Mercedes, you have uh, Toto Wolff, who is the principal, who is the CEO, and also a partner. Yes. He has some share. He has his one of thirty-three percent. He has thirty-three percent share yes. in the business. Yes. Coming on to Ferrari, it's an organization where the principal is on a salary terms. Yes. Has no stake. Has no uh, skin in the game. Uh, mm. Quite literally, has no skin mm. in the game. He's just a person who's taking his salary and just doing this job at the end of the day. And the actual person who's moving things forward is the what do you call them board board members and all. Yes. So you think the Ferrari's demise is because 
the principal, the head of the table, the head of the snake is no, has no skin in the game. You think? Do, do you believe that ideology? I mean, th- it has been going around. That is something I will agree with. However, I wouldn't uh, say that it explains entirely their demise. Because if you see their organizational culture, now they are proud. Okay, now first thing, let, let me tell you this has this kind of this culture has been there since Enzo Ferrari yes. was running the team yes. and what did he say build the car <laughs> it's about the car it's not about the aerodynamics or whatever it's about the car the car yeah. has to be fast yeah and that that ideology still sticks I think Marinello. they should update it a little bit they should they mold, should mold, yes. it a, mold it a little bit Yes, I wouldn't say a little bit. I would say quite a lot because back in the day when we would have uh, engines like, you know, naturally aspirated V12, screaming yeah. V10s. Oh my <laughs> God, I love those V10s. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, if you play the sound of a V10, I, I, I I didn't start watching F1 yeah. when I, w- I came during me the hybrid neither. era. Me neither, uh, me neither. Of course, I mean we have. Come it was only the, the videos which era. made me wanna, you know, okay, this was the car. Yeah. This was how they sounded back in the day and all. I just stumbled upon a reel uh, on Instagram uh, which had the sound of the V10. All three engines in the same track. Yes, same yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. V12. V10, and V8, V8, and also V6. Yeah. And it, there was such a stark contrast. But for to me personally, I loved the screaming of the V10. And tough. after that, the entire night, I was just sleeping to the sound <laughs> of V10. Boing, boing, boing. It was too good. It's, it's too good, man. Yeah. It's really good. I love that. They should, they should in some way, you know, think about the fuel efficiency and also bring back such screaming engines. But they're, they're trying to do that, right? You yes. know, like 10% ethanol. ethanol. Next year is 20%, I guess. Yes, they're going to in- increase the ethanol. They have content. an idea of 2030 carbon neutral. Is that what they're looking at? 2030, I guess. It's 2030, yes. 2030 yeah. carbon, carbon neutral. neutral. 2026 onwards, there is going to be a complete uh, shake up yeah, in yeah. the rules. That's when Audi is coming in as well. Yes, exactly. I'm Audi. excited about another team. Yes, honestly. And have you heard the rumor? Science uh, might have signed a yeah. pre agreement with uh, Audi. Audi. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. First, there was a ru- I think there was a rumor about. Uh, Initially, there was this crazy rumor about Vettel and Mick Schumacher, but then it did not hold any water. So, uh, yeah, I guess the signs, rumor. I mean, again, never say. Not. I mean, never say never. It's Formula One. You've you seen, never, you never you, know. You've seen Form, uh, Fernando Alonso retire and come back again. You've seen yes. Michael Schumacher so, retire from and yes, come back and again. And come back again. Yes. So, so you never know if Vettel might come back again. But again, uh, whether he will come back in an Audi or no is something that really nobody cannot say. Because again, we cannot say whether he is going to come back or no, but knowing F1, you really never know, right? I think that's the beauty of the sport and that's what, you know, keeps people at the edge, teeth ring. Okay, what's going to happen next? Yeah. What's going to happen think, next? You uh, think if Sebastian stayed and not retired, would he have uh, been on the podium position? Of would course he, he would have been on the podium position because it is his inputs that while the driving the would... Aston Martin in the previous two years that helped them i wouldn't uh, entirely give him the credit but yes he has yeah. given the inputs yeah. and uh, they have the money he has great course. mechanical sense yes he does yeah. you know inspector inspector seb yeah they, inspector the memes, <laughs> they say right inspector seb that's too good yeah there was inspector seb there was there were so many names there on so him. many seb scooty scooter seb <laughs> scooter seb yeah. i like scooter seb a lot yeah. yeah he got fined for that do you remember yeah i, I remember oh he got God. fined like i think some Probably in thousands of euros, not yeah. more than ten thousand. But he got fined fifty thousand euros for you know touching That's Hamilton's rear Hamilton's wing. Car. I think that was back in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Verstappen did that as well. Yeah, yeah, Verstappen did that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The tweet that he put. He out was about to do that, but uh, yeah, I think he was having a little banter with Christian Horner. Oh, no, no, that's going to cost you twenty five thousand euros yeah. or something, or fifty thousand or whatever. But yeah, that was that was fun, but. Yeah, uh, have you seen, you know, the latest video, I think Verstappen is getting really bored, that yeah, uh, yeah, Horn O'Connor, yeah. you saw that, the Horn O'Connor, so they put 10 <laughs> cutouts of Christian Horner and they at the corner and it. Verstappen was <laughs> and drifting across and I think he made a few corners. Dude, every driver on a summer break is either enjoying in the snow or the water and this motherfucker is 
driving cars during the summer break. Like, yeah. Come on, yeah. Just take a take a break, dude. You've already won the championship. I don't think uh, it's more. I think it's more of a, you know a recreational activity for him at this point. Yeah. I mean, he's got the fastest car this year. This year has become pretty much boring. I mean, look, uh, we cannot say what's going to happen after summer break, especially since uh, Charles got P what P three in Spa, right? Spa yeah. is not a track. that was ideally suited for ferrari's upgraded car but again uh, he was able to pull that off so again they ended the but come know, on it's pretty much evident verstappen has sealed the victory verstappen has sealed yeah it is a, it is a p2 and p3 that we have to debate about exactly is the race to p2 now if you see verstappen is somewhere at around like 315 points and uh, the next uh, i think p2 right now is sergio perez 190 interesting interesting stat verstappen alone can win the constructor championship without perez as exactly help. because now verstappen <laughs> alone has more points than the yeah. next Oh, uh, then P two in constructors. Who's that? Mercedes. Yeah. Two forty seven. Exactly. So Stappen alone has three hundred and fifteen points. So yeah, that's that's it's too big of a lead to have. It is unless and until uh, I've seen this yeah. reel on Instagram where uh, this motherfucker, you know, uh, he he comes out of turn one and then he's like, there's a five second gap for him. After <laughs> after after twenty or thirty five laps. Uh, The team should start just playing Netflix uh, on a screen. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just chill for a while. Yeah, he'll probably watch <laughs> something and try, or maybe he'll watch his previous races and feel good about himself. Yeah. I think that's the most likely thing. It's I just mean, turn one, dude. After turn one, we're done. We're just focusing yeah, on P two and P three. I've seen this in another video of some guy. He put a black tape. Mm. He, he drew a black tape, and uh, he just sticked it over to the points table on the left <laughs> side of the corner, and the P one, and it's done. That's and, it. and he's just watching the P two, P three before. That's his race. Yeah, I mean, at least there is something uh, you know remotely exciting about uh, this season, and if it is that, then it's P two <laughs> again, which brings us to last season also, where you know P one was already sealed. I think like uh, three races yes. before. Yes, it was in Japan. Japan. It was in Japan. Yes, yeah. so it rained that day. It was Suzuka. Yeah, Suzuka. It, it rained a lot yes. that day, and uh, yeah, it was a very brief race. That was a very good race because. Uh, It was Cha- Charles. If he finished P three, he would have still been in contention it, for the championship. He would have, but, but he was. He went on to the curb, gaining an advantage while fighting with Perez, I believe. Oh, and that's the yeah, reason why yeah, he got yeah. a five second penalty. Yes. If not for the five yes, second penalty, yes. he was still in contention. He was still in contention. That one penalty just yeah. took him out. That was so unfortunate. I think I was, it was last lap. It just he had to do it. I mean, no, not gonna lie, I was so mad looking at that. Yeah, I was I was really really pinning my hopes on that race. And then I opened uh, Hot Star, and then it was all <laughs> raining, and I was like, oh. Westerman even Westerman didn't knew that he won until he went to the interview section and they told yeah. him like yeah you are the champion you won the championship they're like oh okay <laughs> have you seen that yeah like, I've seen like that the cool down room he was just yeah, I saw I was that like three alone. four times but it was so fucking hilarious <laughs> God damn yeah but I mean it was I good last year was good uh, last year was at least yeah, there was a battle for championship there was uh, my my favorite battle was the British Grand Prix dude my God Hamilton oh my God the way he Two over goes to Perez and like. <laughs> Charles, oh, that was crazy. That's poetry at its yeah, best. That was too good, like. And Crofty is the man who can just deliver such. Uh, yeah, exactly. Commentary. Yeah, his commentary made it all the more better for sure. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I really thought Leclerc could get the better of Perez, but Perez was putting so much pressure, and then from here, <laughs> <laughs> he just comes out. <laughs> he just came from nowhere. I mean, I think like not nowhere. He was definitely there. They, I think they had a gap of at, at best one second between each yeah. other. So. It was not more. It I was think the battle between Leclerc like, yeah. and Perez made the uh, gap come down, and it just he saw the. And then Hamilton, yeah, he was like, okay, these guys are battling. Let me take advantage. And he it was just for that corner. I think he overtook yeah. him. I think Perez someone overtook him again yeah. after that. But yeah, it was a good uh, thing for the. I watched it in my TV. This particular one, normally I'm just out and about, so I would probably watch it on my phone. Hmm. That was last year. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that was last year. Yeah, and uh, I watched it on my TV, and uh, I could hear the roar of the crowd when Hamilton did that. Yeah. That gave me goosebumps. I mean, it, it felt nice. Nice. Uh, when did you start watching F1? Which which season was it? Uh, well, to be very honest, I started watching because of Drive to Survive. Same, same. Yeah, same it, I think it was towards the end of 2021. Yeah, I'm glad I was exactly. able to catch the ultimate uh, Buddha Way. Exactly, Please. same, same. Yeah. I started with uh, Drive to Survive same as well, but I've after I got interested, you know, I delved into the previous seasons, 
uh, about the Michael yeah. Marcus era. About uh, the past yeah, era. Even Alain Prost in Ayrton Senna's era. That was crazy. You should watch the races. It is. And it was manual gearbox back in the day. Yeah, it was a manual gearbox. Yes, wow. and it do that era had some of the most intense rivalry. Yes, like it was crazy. They would even crib about which. Like you know, which side of the grid they are starting from, and they knew that okay, if I start from the right, left hand side of the grid, okay, I'm having an advantage in some tracks. Yeah. So there was this one race where uh, uh, Ayrton Senna, Alain Prost. Uh, so Senna was on the you know, Prost was first and Senna was P2. So hmm. they were on the front row. Senna was on the right hand side. I'm not sure about the specifics. It was a long time ago. But yeah, he knew he had an advantage starting from there, and he did definitely. He did. Yeah, yeah. It was the most. I think it was precision at its best. To and uh, with the manual gearbox. Even those cars with the manual gearbox. Yeah. I've seen a video cars. of Monaco uh, of Art and Senna. Hmm. To you know Monaco, how yeah, wide, how narrow the tracks yeah, are. Yeah, they were narrow. And this motherfucker yes. just shifts his gears in those high speed corners. It's too good what they're doing back in the day. <laughs> To it and yeah, it was definitely good. But I think that was the era that has really defined modern, like a re- I would say retro modern, retro modern. Yeah, I could say retro. Yeah. Yeah, retro modern it's because retro it was more than thirty years ago. But for yeah. the people who've been watching, it's like the OG formula. Yes, OG formula. Uh, I think some people I'm would uh, say Schumacher's era was the OG. But again, again, like if we were uh, to you know if. Our generation was to watch Michael Schumacher dominating for you know five years in a row. Then uh, they would probably lose their minds. Wait for the next five years, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. we're gonna feel the same with Verstappen. Okay, well. Uh, do you think he's gonna? Who's going? Do you think? Uh, do you exactly. think Verstappen's gonna ba- break the eight? Eight? He's gonna get the eight year no, title? No. 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 Why? No. Well, see, dude, there's there's a lot Is more competition now. And then there was before and exactly 2026 i was coming to that 2026 is going to see a major shake up in the regulations Absolutely. so again like now we know what happened in 2014 right there was a massive shake up yes. uh, they took out the v8 and they introduced the v6 hybrid, hybrid. and mercedes have already been developing the hybrid system Damn. so yeah That's and red bull was busy you know winning championships and uh, tuning its v8 even further renault will be the you know yes. the manufacturer tuning the V8. Yes. So you just have to get a head day. start, and I think Red yeah. Bull has. I would say they have time to invest money. They do have time, and uh, they all, uh, Christian Horner also knows uh, better than to repeat uh, you know the previous mistakes that he's made because uh, Toto Wolff was smart enough when he got into Mercedes in 2013. He was like you know it was what? In 2013. Huh? Yeah, it was yeah. in 2013, and uh, that was when. Uh, yeah, he he was like, you know what, 2014 new regulations are coming. Let's ramp, let's let's ramp up the development of the hybrid engine and so on and so forth. And uh, I'm pretty sure Lewis Hamilton, they like they would have approached Lewis Hamilton. I yeah. think they did. Yeah, Toto Wolff did, and it was, it was Toto Wolff and Nicky Lauda. They said it was Nicky yes. who convinced. Yes, yes, it was Nicky Lauda. Yeah. yeah, it was him who convinced Hamilton. Both of them were at the helm of uh, Mercedes. Them, you know operations and uh, engine development everything so yeah i mean yeah mercedes is what is this today because of nicky lauda definitely. yes definitely he is yeah. definitely left his mark and uh, yeah his ethos and work ethic still is there you know in the factory and uh, where is their factory exactly i think it is in silverstone right no 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 not silverstone silverstone, silverstone is aston martin yeah aston martin is silverstone it's and HQ, I think it's in brackley brackley yeah. okay Brackley United Kingdom, yeah, and uh, Renault now Alpine, Alpine would be in Enstone, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it, it's it's a trend. Many of the constructors they have their factories in UK because they have the, you know, the high skilled labour over there itself. So it's the British who have been, yes, yeah, mastering the art of producing F1 yeah. parts. Uh, what's, your, what's your what's your favourite so uh, yeah. track of all time? Favorite track. Well, uh, it's 
Yeah, it's Considering I just love stuff. all tracks, but I think you know, Spa would be it. Spa is a track that is you know. Spa is so good that it's it so dangerous. It is so good. Yeah, exactly. That's what makes it even better. It's so dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, Spa is a really lovely track. Plus, yeah, it ha- you can really test your the speed. Exactly. And uh, the only other track that can do that is the Monza. The road is too fucking good to even look at. Yeah, it's really good yeah. to even look at. That's true. Uh, and uh, yeah. spa on a rainy day would be <laughs> devastating i would say <laughs> yeah spa i would not go i don't want to yeah. be in the driver seat you would it so no, you yeah. would but yeah i think you know last year suzuka it was really really dangerous i mean yeah. we i was just yeah, going to get the clear point of view and gasly's uh, point yeah, of view yeah gasly's right? point of the view the crane yes. was there and he was traveling at 250 kmh yeah exactly oh and my God. It, it's i'll tell you what so like they have the uh, tracks by heart which corner went to take the left yeah. it it's that precise and they'll obviously have a little show to map you know a mm. uh, map on their uh, steering wheel yeah, 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 they, they, they have yes. it so yeah. they're just going to see where they're going and it, it, it's all done for uh, you know more than anything else safety yeah of the drivers so yeah i mean coming to safety introducing new safety regulations is always the halo you know, it was good. it's like you know trying to uh, you know teach children because nobody likes it uh, at, but you know, many, the many many opposed many opposed the introduction halo. of halo but and, when uh, it was yeah, introduced after but uh, what happened to romain grosjo in 2020 yeah. yeah. but it saved a lot man i mean yeah, it saved his life charles I, life yeah, charles life and also most importantly guan yu zhu yeah my it god was because of the stuff. halo that guy is still alive i yeah. mean it's crazy <laughs> It was his debut season as well. Yeah, it was his debut season. I think it was the same race, right? Last year, Silverstone. Silverstone, yeah, Silverstone. Silverstone. Oh yeah, same Dude, race. Drive to Survive milked that particular scene out so much that yeah. every episode of uh, the last season had mention of uh, the Boy accident. Show, yeah. yeah, something or the other. They showed it in some different angle. I don't know how why they milked out that a lot. I mean, it's just you know, it's it's the craziest thing that happened. Shock factor. I would say the shock factor. is what gets people into drive to survive like yeah. you know before uh, getting into f1 i thought okay fine uh, this, it's this, just cars this, going yeah, around it's just cars going around probably boring uh, but again being a car guy it was very ironic for me to think that so then i thought okay i think everyone's watching drive to survive and getting into it so yeah. maybe i can do that have you and been to any races or are you no, planning no, i i might uh but i would prefer going to a race maybe in europe than you know some of the more stellar locations more right. iconic it's more formula 1 it's more yeah, formula 1 yeah i initially thought you know i would probably go to the one in abu dhabi because uh, yeah i have a set up shop in dubai as well so abu dhabi is of just like 2 hours away yeah but again no uh, i'm planning for 2024 abu dhabi at the moment yeah you can it's yeah. it's really good yeah. i think maybe we can plan something there but again yeah it's i have to tell you that it's going to be ridiculously expensive no uh, that's the thing uh, so my uh, my friend's friend is a pilot in uh, air arabia mm-hmm. so with his pilot license and all he can sponsor two people for free air tickets every month nice like, so he 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 said he'll he's okay air, with air tickets are one thing the the the, the tickets yeah. like 35000 so it's yeah. fine if you are if the stay if your stay and tickets are taken <coughs> care of i can yeah, i can afford 35000 all right see so of course if i ca- calculate the whole thing it's going to be 1 lakh each or 1.5 lakh but we can discuss stay yeah. and everything we can discuss we can be we can just uh, we can we can stay in dubai and then maybe go to abu dhabi yeah. or something so yeah i'm uh, planning for that he said uh, i can stay at his house and The he lives in Abu Dhabi. He lives in where does he live? Sharjah, I guess, because he lives in Air Arabia is based out of Sharjah. Uh, he so. lives in Sharjah. So yeah, how 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 far is Sharjah from Abu Dhabi? Uh, again, it, it's probably like maybe let's say two hours, forty minutes to three uh, hours, fine. three hours. It's fine. Uh, because see, Dubai and Sharjah are right beside each other. So yeah. You cross old Dubai, you go north, just straight, you go to Sharjah. So yeah, that's the plan for next yeah. year. But let's see how it uh, unfolds. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Just for the experience of you know being there, listening to that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think at least once we should really yeah. try that, and I think no better race than Abu Dhabi because it's it's the night race season finale and it's, it's night, night race. race. Yes, it's a night race. Oh yeah. It cannot be a daytime race. No yeah. way. 
No, 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 no I last game was Malaysia Malaysia yeah yes Malaysian Grand Prix 20 uh, you think it's real do you think it's real yeah i think it should be real i mean come on come on <laughs> he he say i'll tell you what okay so uh, from what i recall it was uh, nelson pk and uh, fernando, fernando alonso and who was involved in it they were teammates at reno and uh, fernando alonso would have won had nelson pk crashed and that's exactly what happened nelson pk crashed yeah deliberately he because Nelson Piquet wanted, wanted uh, he wanted uh, what do you say he wanted a renewal of the Renault contract yes. so he did it he like look I'm the good boy <laughs> yeah but, but FI was very lenient back in the days back in the day yes and it's because of those incidents like crash gate and uh, the pit stop incident between Alonso and Hamilton, Hamilton, Hamilton la, the yes. previous year and then multi 21 I think that would not have evoked any FIA action. It was just more of you know how a team manages both their drivers. But you know it's incidents like these, uh, outlier incidents like these that uh, you know help F1 develop even further as a sport. And I think that's what's important. Dude, they didn't even have pit stop uh, limits. They did not. Yes. Motherfucker was driving at 200 kmph in the fucking pit stop, and people were just standing there. Yeah, yeah. That those are all safety hazards that have been later on recognized. and uh, you know see introducing a new regulation is not that easy it's not clockwork yeah. it takes time and it also takes the approval of oh so many people yes. involved and uh, not just the approval of other fi people or uh, other teams the, the 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 engineers the drivers the 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 pit crew everyone needs to be involved in the decision making otherwise the decision cannot be made properly this Uh, yeah this has to be the most democratic process as as democratic as possible yeah do you remember the 20 2013 indian grand prix yeah yeah i think that was when uh, vettel bowed down to his car yeah. right yeah oh got such an iconic scene yeah, yeah iconic was, definitely i think that was a daytime race though it was a daytime race in india and but it yeah. was during winter season so it made sense Achha. because uh, winters in yeah Delhi. it was in, in yeah, noida was yes. yeah yeah they can be bright pretty that was the race which race. sealed his world championship yes that was the race that's why he did that just yeah. yes sorry I I was not into Formula One back in the day, okay. but I was uh, I remember watching, uh, reading a newspaper, and there was a big picture of Vettel in the backside of the sports yes, section. Yes, yes, I've I seen that. I remember that picture very vividly. And, and I've seen like, a few Vettel races also. You know, when I was a kid, maybe back in 2011. I know. Yeah, I I do recall that. Yeah, he was always that first. Big, yes. He was always first. We we didn't know yeah. Formula One, but we knew Sebastian Vettel. We knew the name. Yeah, Sebastian. We knew Vettel. Schumacher. We knew the Vettel name. Yeah. I've heard I've heard this name, but never into you know Formula One the car race. I've heard uh, Schumacher, Vettel, Lewis yes. Hamilton. He is the only <laughs> other name. Fernando yeah. Alonso. These are the four yeah, names that yeah, I would names, yes. recall, and of course Ayrton Senna. Uh, yeah. I mean, I got to know about Ayrton Senna after I got into Formula One these days because it was too long ago. Yeah, uh, for me, I, I've definitely heard of Atkins, and I have read about it. Uh, yeah, he was. It was quite the talked about topic even now. I think that's how he's left his mark. If you yeah. see his races, you will understand why. Oh my God, it's crazy. It's it's just overdrive, you know. They had the best car, McLaren, back in the day. Yes. They had the best car from nineteen eighty seven, I guess, nineteen eighty eight, I guess, nineteen eighty eight, nineteen eighty nine, where there were sixteen races in the entire season, and McLaren won fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's gonna. Th- They won fifteen. How many did Red Bull win this season? All. Uh, all. All. Yeah. They won all. They won all. P one. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Why do you think I'm not watching? <laughs> It's. Oh yeah. man, they're gonna win the entire season, dude. If it if it goes this way, yeah. And they're about to bring some more upgrades by Zander Wood. I mean, they play. have to. They don't. They don't want to be surprised by, let's say, <laughs> McLaren or Ferrari or someone. Nah. Or Aston is not. Uh, they're too far ahead, though. 
to be even surprised. We can say that now, but they've already started developing for the next season, you know. Yeah, uh, that's what Toto Wolf was worried because about because they will not have enough wind tunnel time, right? Yeah, and obviously Toto Wolf will be worried about, but he will have more wind tunnel time than Red Bull. Yeah, so he, it's, he it's just a matter of how fast Mercedes catch up to Red Bull. Like, if I, I've been reading news of late, uh, even though I'm not following, I've been reading uh, about how uh, uh, several Mercedes or uh, you know. under the technical division the engineering division how several of their highly skilled engineers have been you know migrating to red bull yes. and and stuff and that is something that should worry toto the most it's not about how fast you catch up to a team it's about even yes, james was he went yeah. to williams james yeah Wallace exactly it's, so it's yeah. about how well you retain your re, uh, you know your skilled uh, labor right and that's the only thing that can guarantee you catching up to the team at the top having the most skill labor and red bull uh, yeah they are just having as a gala time as long as as long as adrian yeah, exactly. is yeah, in yeah, red bull to say they're going to be on top of life uh, yeah i mean you never know because adrian who was in red bull since a pretty long time right i think since the late 2000s yes. he was in red bull and uh, yeah he definitely endured the entire uh, you know 2014 to 2021 dominance of mercedes yeah. right let's talk so about again, 2021 though 2021 let's talk about <laughs> abu dhabi 2021 the final lap oh my god that <laughs> see the, that's when you know uh, twitter started trending about exactly uh, the final race uh, the, the last final lap race, the last yeah. lap hashtag was trending a lot and uh, i felt well, I, i i didn't knew formula 1 back then then when i actually got into formula 1 i go i went and i researched i think you know people who think that perez will be ousted from red bull I think they should just maybe watch the highlights of Abu Dhabi race again and then. <laughs> he's a team player, dude. He's a more yeah. he's more of a team player than what yeah, Max Verstappen exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. He's more of a team player, and that's exactly why he's been hired. Yes. I think yeah. Uh, he knows that. He knows he's a look, number two driver. If you're talking about Perez being a team player, I don't know. I feel I'm being a little ironic here because back in the day when Perez was racing for Force, Force India, India or Racing Point, Ocon was his teammate, <laughs> and. Yeah, they were not exactly the best of friends. Yes. Uh, and they had their fights, but I think it's more. Uh, I think it's got to do more with you know the synergy between the teammates and. Uh, yeah, as Verstappen is one of the. It's the second driver curse in Red Bull. Yeah, the second driver curse because uh, right now uh, we are seeing uh, the second driver stay for a very long time. I think the last time that happened was Rick, uh, Ricardo. Ricardo. Ricardo, and he was supposed to be the first <laughs> driver. Till twenty eight, so twenty eighteen was the year where he, uh, you know, he started to understand that his role was becoming more of a second driver to yeah. Verstappen. And, Baddest, uh, yeah. worst career move ever. Worst year. career move ever for sure, because I think he would have uh, had a real shot at at least in a good car. Yeah, at least in a B2. good car, he would have had a real shot at beating Verstappen. And he went to McLaren back in the day. He went to Renault. Oh yeah, I wonder, no. And I think that the Renault move was also was not good. a bad it move. It was not a bad move because he did he, get he got podiums. a podium he for Renault. Podiums, yeah, yeah. They, that was there, you know. That was that was exactly where they were hitting the ceiling. Like yes. they they were investing a lot of money into car development. It was uh, drivers there. Drivers weren't exactly bad either. Nico Hulkenberg, the guy yeah. who has been P4. Nico is good, dude. I don't he's know why good. people hate on him. Uh, I know he's not. He hasn't got any podiums, but he's a good driver. I think that's that's the reason why people are hating on him, right? Like, okay, look, he's not gotten any podium so far. So, as good of a driver as he might be, he is not showing the results, and that's uh, possible to evoke hate, right? So, I think that would be the reason. But he's a good driver, and yes. uh, uh, back in the day, in 2018, Carlos Sainz was there. 2017, also he was there. Yes, that's for sure. So. Yeah, Carlos Sainz. We are, as we know, he's one of the most consistent drivers. Let's talk about the um, debut rookie rookies of uh, F1 this season. Yes, the rookies. Yeah, so it went. I'll tell you what the rookies of F1. <laughs> uh, let me name them. Even though we all know who they are, it's Nick De Vries and Oscar, and Oscar Piastri. And you they started off here. Yeah. Nick De Vries. Went downhill and Oscar Piastri went up. Just there. straight up opposite. Exact opposite to a point where. My God, where what a performance! I mean, yeah. the starting few races, Oscar was struggling a bit. The McLaren was struggling a bit. The McLaren was struggling But, a bit. Uh, yeah, not a no, bit. No, as Verstappen as Verstappen says, it's not. Uh, you know, there's a um, in a poor in an interview or something mm. uh, when he sees that uh, 
who is this guy lando norris was on the podium mm. he's like uh, i didn't expect lando to be here oh yeah. sorry yeah. i didn't expect the claren to be here i was just expect <laughs> lando to be higher up Yeah. That clearly sums up what yeah, uh, what McLaren. What did that Formula One is about? It's about the drivers. Yeah. It's not entirely about the car, but it's about the one who's driving it. Yeah, because I mean, as clearly Verstappen let yeah. me, the world know that look. Yeah, <laughs> no, according guy. to me, Norris is a good driver. Lando yeah. is a good driver, but it's the car that he is in, which is holding him back. But Oscar's man, he did. He is really good, huh? He's too, he's too I think good. now we can say that he is really good because. Yeah. uh well if the car is better some drivers end up squandering completely squandering the chance to you know be up there and i think we can have a little flashback to pierre gasly and alex albon yes. being in red bull in 2019 and 2020 i don't forgot about that yeah <laughs> albon oh my god yeah albon errors in red bull was he did something and then he crashed and then like i not just them that is uh, that, that is something that we all remember because we watched drive to survive before yeah, that exactly. There's this driver called Daniel Kvyat. Kvyat. Daniel yes, Kvyat. Kvyat. You know the story we had Daniel Kvyat. <laughs> <laughs> Max was stuff and just he he just took away his entire life. So this is he the thing about. He took away his girlfriend. He took yeah. away his uh, child. Child. He took away his, his Red Bull uh, seat. Red Bull seat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Dude. And and he's what he's I think he's four years younger to Daniel. Kuyat. Yeah, yes. Yeah. He just robbed him <laughs> of his entire life. Completely robbed him, and he God. didn't. It's not like he hated Kuya or something. It's just he did, he was there. He had to prove his point yeah, there. Yeah, he, he had to it. prove his point. He won his it. first race, kada? He won his first race, or was that? I think he got to a podium. He was subbed in uh, in in. He got a podium on a very good finish. He it was mm-hmm. for Toro Rosso, mm-hmm. 2015. Okay. Yes, his uh, debut race. I think he got points. Yeah. Or a podium. I can't. I really can't recall. I think we might want to look that up later. It's such a boss move for Max Verstappen to yeah. take away his entire life and be the world champion just sitting. I'm not exactly a fan of Verstappen because you know, as every drive to survive uh, graduate, I should say, <laughs> yeah, they end up hating Verstappen. Dude, come on, and, they, uh, that's so fictitious. Fic- yeah, to as every graduate, they would end up hating Verstappen. But again. Oh, uh, it's it's got to do more look, with look, how look, much. Look, listen, yeah. listen, listen. We didn't we didn't have drive to survive during Sebastian Vettel's prime era. We didn't have it during the Lewis Hamilton's prime era. Hmm. Although they were not like with Stappen, they were still prime with. Era, right? Towards the later part of no, his prime. No, I, I I meant during the Red Bull prime era of uh, Sebastian Vettel. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. See, he, even he refused to give up his positions, or he was very uh, multi twenty one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, multi twenty. We just didn't have a medium which was broadcasted towards the entire world. A which medium is apart it, from Twitter. I mean, come on, Twitter back in the day. I mean, how many people? I mean, still, it was a good. It was yeah. pretty much cemented as the world But switching see, place. But see, drive to survive definitely has changed uh, the position uh, perspective on the Stappen. I mean, I think that's where drive to survive. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure, you know, the directors, producers would not want a certain narrative to be floating around. You really cannot, uh, you know, have a iron fist over what people perceive. Uh, the drivers to be and uh, the way they have directed, you know, trying to include the shock factor yeah. and Verstappen is Drama. pretty much at the helm of the shock factor because Every time. some of the things that he says or does, like slapping a con. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, come on, that was that was crazy, right? So dude, they have. Where the fuck are those cameras, dude? I mean, where did where, where did they put them? Again, it's, that's feels, their best guarded secret, yes. right? If if everyone knew, then uh, I, I think uh, e- every here. Tom, Dick, and Harry would uh, identify the cameraman and be like, "Hey, I'm in Drive to Survive." <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's how the human what, uh, works. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Before we end the note, uh, what do you think about the f- Apple's production of Formula One, Brad Pitt? Uh, uh, it's called Apex. I have no opinion on that, and I will have no opinion on that until it releases and I watch it. Okay. Yes, but I just hope they do a good enough job. I mean. I don't know. I think I'm think they I, will. I'm pretty sure they will. But they have the money to do it, but I don't do. think they they're gonna fuck it up. They're gonna it's make it so dramatized. They're gonna dramatize it a lot. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like uh, 
they you see rush want to rush, dramatize rush it or was dramatizing because mm. that era was dramatizing the whole rivalry between james mm. hunt and uh, yeah uh, nikki was uh, yeah. dramatizing so they made it that way i don't think how can they make uh, look even i see every era has their own dramatizing phases like uh, senna and pros that was oh so dramatized yeah. and uh, after that we have uh, shumaker and mika hakkinen yeah. for a good two years until you know mclaren exactly. had those issues in 2001 right and then we have uh, Oh yes, Alonso. Ever since Alonso, Alonso went, oh my God. <laughs> started winning championships with Renault, he's made you know an, a good few fours in uh, the likes of Hamilton and uh, later on Sebastian Vettel and Felipe Massa. Oh man, Massa, he poor yeah. guy, huh? He would have won the yeah, uh, drivers' championship in 2008. He would have won it. He narrowly lost it to Lewis Hamilton. Yes. Very very narrowly. You know he he, he celebrated a- his. Championship win only to see I think which driver some driver was suppose I think uh, was it uh, yeah it was Hamilton himself I think uh, when Hamilton uh, if he was to be a P eight or P seven then he would uh, Massa would have won but I think there was a driver ahead who had a DNF issue and Hamilton got propelled mm. to the P six something me, like that yeah uh, correct me if I'm wrong correct me if I'm wrong he recently launched a lawsuit against the FIA saying that. If the crash kit did not happen, hmm. if it was uh, if it was not deliberately happened, yes, yes, I would have won that particular yes, year's yes, championship. Yes, yes, yes. It was Felipe Massa. Yeah. Yes, and he is right. He is right. Absolutely right. Because if that win did not happen, he would have won. He might have had more points by the no, end of the season. No, he would have won. Yeah, Definitely, exactly. he would have won. He would have had more points. As a head start, and he wouldn't have had to, uh, you know, deal with the worry of Hamilton, you know, co- uh, qualif- or, uh, ending the race or P6 or lower or something like that. You know, that that is something very stressful to deal with. You know, especially when someone has celebrated his championship for a good 30 seconds only to know that no, it's not happened. <laughs> 30. Those 30 exactly. seconds would have been the best 30 seconds of his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, then I think uh, it's been a, it's been a good time. It has definitely yes. We, If, if we just let this recording go through, we could have we could talk like two hours about this formula. Probably, yeah. I but think we should yeah. stop a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah. you know we can, uh, yeah, we can uh, phase it out. We can. Yeah, we can talk Let's more. Let's do an, an, another episode. Yeah, we, can just, we, just, we can just we can just take segments out. Yeah. Like, okay, look, we're talking about F1. So yes. So I'm I actually, you know, nice I have, I have a few plans with this podcast. Um, mm-hmm. Right after uh, summer break ends, uh, yeah. right after every race, I want to start a podcast. Uh, For mm-hmm. about that particular race, a review of that race and all. Yeah. So I was thinking, me that. and Hari, uh, we started off, and for every race, I'm going to bring in some guest. Yeah, for so sure. So for one race, it would be you. There's another race, it would be that. So I'm, I'm planning that. We could do that. Yes. Yeah. Um, we could. Let's formulate it after the summer break ends. And also, yeah, I have some ideas for sure. We can, you know, have themed F1 talks. Yeah. Uh, we can exactly. probably specify a certain It'll era, 1970 good. to 1980, 1950 to 1960, yeah, something like that. Yeah. so we'll have a lot more content to talk about yeah. and uh, as uh, as you have seen as you have all seen i am really not running out of content to talk about <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah um a good comeback so looking yeah, at prediction let's do let's prediction. do some break let's, let's do some yeah. predictions let's go let's go okay uh, so uh, i would like to uh, analyze a little bit let's 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 uh, take in to factor some facts okay so now we have uh, aston martin and then we have ferrari and we have mclaren sure. now they are now every team is going to introduce a slew of upgrades now how is it working out for them now ferrari is going taking the more uh, you know uh, bigger what, upgrades what is the consistent route and uh, i think ferrari is looking more consistent as fred wasser is Uh, taking time to warm up and yeah. to completely fully integrate into the whole uh, you know ferrari uh, culture and style of working that i really you really cannot expect too much from fred wasser but at the same time you can expect a lot yeah but again ferrari will uh, probably take a more sustained uh, step towards uh, upgrades whereas aston martin it's uh, i think uh, they try to you know uh, introduce a set of upgrades and it is holding them back but maybe if they iron out some issues they might they might even uh, beat mclaren out on the top you never know uh, and mclaren uh, they they got lucky 
Yeah. They and my lucky. my prediction I think I wouldn't say lucky but uh, I would say that uh, yeah they they had the better outcome I would say. So uh, keeping all these uh, you know factors in mind uh, towards the end of the season P2 I think would uh, go to Ferrari. Ferrari just because you're wearing it <laughs> not just because i'm wearing my, it my prediction would be i think mercedes is going to make a good comeback mercedes uh, will yeah yeah i think that they have some i have forgot about mercedes i really forgot talking about mercedes <laughs> what's wrong with me no i want to take that back you know they're wearing this you know this beautiful hoodie no 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 it has to be mercedes in p2 sorry scratch yeah. that <laughs> it's mercedes because they have been consistent yes. ferrari is taking the consistent route towards upgrades but mercedes have been consistent towards yeah. their so yeah i'm expecting it's something it's mercedes from, yeah for me it's mercedes yeah yeah so i think yeah uh, lock kar diya jaye from the last three episodes uh, where the guest from the previous episode asks a question to the guest of the next episode mm-hmm. so for the last episode uh, we had this uh, we had prerna mm-hmm. who, uh, who wanted to ask the next guest that what is something that uh, you wanted to do a lot in your life which you couldn't and why not is there anything like that which you <laughs> could not do well that is a really interesting question i would say that uh well i've always wanted to you know uh you know get knee deep into the world of photography and graphic design and i cannot do that i have done it before a few small gigs and uh, uh yeah for of course for i mean we have done a little small gig back in the day as an internship but yeah i really felt great you know uh doing what i love doing the best because it's my hobby it's one of my favorite hobbies photography graphic design anything to do with pictures and design all right yes nice. so, so uh, i would like you to write a question for the next guest as well of course so uh, just write it down just don't do it aloud uh of course we won't be showing it on the episode though so of course mm. you can take your time or you can text me back later on <laughs> if you want but yeah i think uh, it's a better idea if i text you i'll yeah, probably come a, up with a, a much idea. better question that's a good idea <laughs> yeah all right then uh, thank you so much for watching this podcast you want to end it on a final note something you want to say something to final the- note well i mean what do i say i'm wearing a ferrari jacket so <laughs> so guys yeah don't judge me for forza it. ferrari but forza ferrari i say ferrari that's all i'm going to tell you <laughs> all right Let's then go. chalo Bye. This is Barack Obama and I'll be giving you an intro about our sponsors today. I mean we digital marketing is a 360 degree marketing agency based out of Hyderabad. Be traditional digital marketing services that your brand needs. A professional drone shoot for your real estate products, real estate lead generation, professional video shoot for your restaurants. They've got it all. More details about them in the description below.